So DMC International Imaging provides imaging from satellites and that's a rather unique service. There are lots of satellite providers out there but we actually coordinate an international constellation of satellites which are owned, or op owned and operated by different countries and who come together to provide two things. They provide a, a disaster response service for rapid onset disasters uh, such as fires and floods and so on. And um, my role in DMCII is to also commercialise the spare capacity of their satellites. And that gives us a chance to give a really great service to monitor vegetation, land cover, uh, changing um, surface of the world. And it's that information I think is really important for the purpose of this conference, which is combating des desertification and land degradation. So what we do at the moment in monitoring the world, we have customers such as the US Department of Agriculture, for whom we monitor the whole of the USA every two weeks um, so that they can monitor each and every field and see how the crops are, are changing. We monitor the Amazon Basin for the Brazilian government and have done since 2005 to enable them to spot when uh, forests are being cut down and then to couple that with good law enforcement. They've really driven down the level of deforestation in the Amazon. But what's really interesting now is that with the capacity of modern technology satellites, we can image the whole of Africa, for example, um, every year without any difficulty. And that hitherto hadn't been possible. Old satellites really took 10 years to do that. You could only compile a cloud-free copy of Africa every 10 years. That applies to all sorts of countries who are in the, the Red Plus uh, campaign as well. So the tropical rainforest belt. So we're very active in trying to provide a solution that has been difficult to come by until now of monitoring uh, the, the surface vegetation of the planet at a level of detail that is useful to derive real valuable uh, observations, but also at a frequency that allows you to see what's happening in terms of the changing phenology of the, uh, the plants here. Uh, and I think what's exciting about coming to this conference is to see that there's a huge problem being tackled here, not just in Africa, but worldwide, with climate change and desertification. And what's really needed is, is good information and good governance. And you can't really get governance without good information. And that's what we think that modern satellite technology can really bring to the table, is good, objective, unbiased information. And at the moment, what sort of people have access to this information? Because um, it strikes me that it could be critical in, in helping not just national but regional levels and even individual farmers to improve the way they, they look after their, their fields. So you know, how do people get access to this and, and at the moment give us a sense of the scope at the moment? So we provide a, a commercial imaging service. So on the field level uh, scale we will image the whole of, uh, for example, Europe or North America on a regular basis and private companies who they will then take that imagery and derive information about each individual field and provide a service to a farmer. Now that farmer will get detailed information at the critical growing points of their crop that enable them to apply fertiliser in a variable way across the field, not just to blanket the field with expensive fertiliser but to choose the points to put it. So a modern GPS enabled bit of equipment will have an input from the satellite derived information, drive across the field and spray out fertiliser in a very selective way. And so that saves a huge amount, not only in the cost of the farmer, but actually also in pollution runoff into the rivers. And that's obviously a, a, an important benefit for any environment agency. So that's on the micro scale, where we can actually see inside each field and see how it's varying on a day-by-day -day basis. And we image some countries every two, three days. Um, but on a larger scale, we provide, for example, the Australian government with a full coverage of Australia. And, and they take a view that they want to make that data available free of charge, open access to everybody in the world. So, that, um, so they, they pay us for a, a license to do that, and then that's freely available. And that policy has also been taken by the Brazilians, who want people to see what they're doing in the country, and they make our data freely available. And that way forward, I think, matches in for commercial companies, on the one hand, and able to provide really great data. Um, and on the other hand, governments who own billion-dollar satellites, um, who then make it available free as well. So there's a role, I think, for both of us here. Um, but commercial generally tends to be far more responsive 
and really focused on customer needs. I mean, that's interesting. Open access and um, the ability for anyone to look at individual pieces of data has, has proved in some ways to, to help a lot of the climate change fields where big research organisations release their statistics. How, how do you sense that... Um, people being able to see how their fields and farmlands are changing not just over weeks and months but sort of decades um, can help them make informed decisions about um, protecting those lands. I, I grew up in East Africa actually and was, uh, my father was involved in agricultural extension so I, I had personal experience of going out and helping um, young farmers in Malawi uh, looking at their uh, uh, settlement programs and how they were applying fertiliser and what yields they were getting. So it was very evident there that if you had access to good information about your field, you could make a much better crop from that land, even on the scale of, of you know, one, one small settlement patch. I think it's going to be possible now to take this kind of satellite technology and make it available through these new smartphones so that you should be able to get it down to the guy in the field so you can have a look at what's going on and get sensible advice at a price that means that it's really economically viable for him. I think that's going to be an exciting future that we'll see coming forward. And you mentioned you've been working with the um, Brazilian government and that there have been recent reports that deforestation in, in the Amazon has, has slowed. But what do you think the impacts are of these satellite pictures, which, you know, I guess when you, when you walk into the rainforest, you can see individual trees have been felled. But what do you think is, is the impact um, when you see vast tracts of land either lacking forest or perhaps becoming recovered? The first uh, satellite image that I took of the Brazilian rainforest I thought was covered in cloud. The, the white area actually turned out to be bare land. It was most shocking. It's a, it's a, it was Rondonia, which is well known as settlement schemes there, um, removed far more forest than was planned. But I think the impact um, for people to see how that, that land is changing is really important. So the transparency with which the Brazilian government, and INPI in particular, um, makes available information on a, a, a fortnightly basis about changing uh, uh, deforestation, I think is fantastic because it enables NGOs and local people to get involved with that information and understand what's happening in their region right down to quite a local scale. And, and as you say, hold people to account, hold businesses to account, hold governments to account if they're, if they're not doing their, their job. Uh, that's definitely the case. I know that when this program first started out and the Brazilians started to use satellite data way back, um, there was definitely a lot of pressure not to release the information. But uh, thankfully they persevered and have now made that a very good model, I think, of how, how um, monitoring should take place and how to involve people and the international community in seeing what really is going on. And it's that combination of good information and good uh, law enforcement has really driven down the rate of deforestation really dramatically. So I think at yeah, last year's uh, COP, um, they had a standing ovation for very, very nearly having reached their 2020 deforestation target already. And, and I mean, we've all watched these um, spy thrillers and seen people tracked on satellite, but w what sort of information can you can you gauge from a satellite picture? Can you? Can you tell whether a field is healthy or not? Um, give us a sense about what, what types of information you can offer. Well, you can go into a Photoshop and you can buy a camera uh, that will take a nice happy snap picture or you can get one with a very long lens. Um, but if you, uh, you need to choose what you want to photograph. So our, our images at the moment are designed to photograph areas 650 kilometers wide so that we can image a very large amount of the world every day but to keep enough detail in there so that there's relevant information inside each field. So in one hectare, we will get about 25 pixels, and that's enough to derive information about that field. If you uh, go to the other end of the scale, there are satellites that will have immensely detailed information. The new ones will come down to a 25 centimeter pixel, but then you're going to see a very small field of view, and, um, and actually that's far too much detail uh, for many applications. You don't need to process all that and you don't need to pay that much money either. So we've got a, a specific uh, sensor that's been designed to monitor the Earth's surface for vegetation change and it's proving remarkably effective.